Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by Aaron Brown of Thrust, a shit-fucked, vile love story, which is a hell of a title. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We rather liked it. Yeah. Did you help come up with the title? No, the title is actually from um, a short story that I believe the original title was just a shit-fucked, vile love story. Um, written by Hannah Neurotica and Victor. It, it was a short story that he adapted into a, a feature length script. And Thrust is a reference to a, a girl band that his sister was in, I think like in the 90s. Oh, really? And it just sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, it does. And then, you know, and sometimes you can't use a shit fucked via love story on, on certain websites. So Who you says? Get, right, right. Here it's fine. But. Yeah. yeah. Did, now I assume you've read the short story. I don't believe I have. Oh, okay, well, I, I assumed wrong. Yeah. I'll get around to it one of these days. I haven't even read the script. No, oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, I actually <laughs> saw the pitch video, and you said you might have had a uh, hand in coming up with the, uh, with, the, with the movie. Yeah, yeah. I've been pretty involved in the whole pre-production process and a lot of the script revision and uh, props and costumes and whatnot, you know. It's kind of like an all hands on deck kind of situation. And uh, yeah, we're making it as collaborative as possible. And, um, you know, Victor and I are kind of starting this uh, little production company as we plan on doing several of these together. So, yeah. When did involved. the idea to, to do that come about? To put together, you know, a, a company I, to work together. I mean, I think it just kind of happened organically. Um We've been friends for a really long time. Um, been like kind of in the same circle of friends of just like uh, indie filmmakers and whatnot from the East Coast. And uh, we did a short together last summer um, called Triangle that was for a compilation, Symbolicus. And um, yeah, we just, we, you know, we were having a lot of fun doing that and it just kind of, escalated into and uh, we were going to be working on this particular feature all along together okay um but we're dating now so it seemed oh, like the natural progression right right and, uh, <laughs> we're lovers a, now yeah all right well very good uh there's an indiegogo campaign which i should bring up i should have brought that up right away but we'll have all the links on the uh website and it's got uh like a day and a half left so uh i know i know home stretch good. yeah yeah is it a campaign that, um, you know, I hate to bring this up, but if it doesn't meet the goal, is it, will the movie still be made? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we were going to make it regardless. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, completing the vision as, as well as we know we could. Um, and we're used to, you know, doing things on a, you know, absolute gorilla budget and, and like just making it work when we have to. Um, but we have a really large cast. Um, it's, it is um, set in like a post-apocalyptic kind of, you know, world. So there's some pretty elaborate sets and costumes. And, and again, we just have so many cast members, so many people involved that, you know, and we got, you know, we're flying in people from all over the country. And these things get pricey. We just want to take good care of people, make sure that, you know, they're happy and feel comfortable and they're happy to be a part of it. So, um, you know, realistically, um, you know, we, we knew we would need about 15 grand to, to do it right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to do it right regardless. You know, I right. think we're at 12 something right now. Uh, so fingers crossed, but yeah, we, the plan was always to march forward no matter what. Um, but we're pretty hopeful. We're pretty hopeful. We'll, how far along is everything? Because I saw, you know, Linnea Quigley has a little video and she has, she looks awesome in it with the headdress and the, and the yeah. costume. Yeah, that costume's incredible. Um, so that was just the, we did, we shot one day mm -hmm. so far um, just with her character and her little minions, her little gang, um, which was shot in the Poconos. And then the bulk of the film will be shot here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, that was just a logistical thing. And, you know, she's Linnea Quigley. You got to want her in the film. Yeah, you got to work yeah. around her schedule. And of course, you know, Victor was happy to do it. So, yeah. One of my favorites. Had you, uh, had you met her before, uh, she got involved in the movie? 
What's up? Did you uh, did you know Linnea? I mean, I know you knew of her, but did you know Linnea at all before? I mean, I've her? I've met her um, just in passing at at conventions, and I've actually been in a couple films with her. But it's just oh, nice. one of those situations where, like, the last film that I did with her, I was in a scene with her, but it was a green screen kind of right, thing, right, right. And, and we shot it on different days, and I was so excited. I mean, I'm still excited to appear on yeah. camera with her, even if I didn't get to directly work with her. Um, but she's a close friend of of Victor's and they've worked together several times in the past and they've been buddies for a while. So that's how we got the magical Linnea Quigley <laughs> in our project. And she's really cool if uh, if she's friendly with you, you know, um, I've seen, you know, some smaller projects she's been a part of and she's happy to really promote it and, you know, and. and Oh yeah. Yeah. She's a doll. She's always professional, always really sweet. So yeah. Yeah. So if you hadn't, you didn't read the story. What what did you think when Victor said like, we should make a shit fucked a vile love story? I mean, I don't recall because this has been in the works for like a couple of years. I mean, I've, I, you know, always happy to work with Victor. And I think, um, you know, we have very similar taste in like our influences, you know, um, just films and uh, music and just the general aesthetic of like what, you know, we, we try and do. Um, so I always knew I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and he's been working on the script, you know, because with these scripts, like with the revisions and the rewrites and then, you know, what's pragmatic, what, what can we like actually pull off, you know, can we really have a cast of 40 plus people plus extras and yada, yada. So, um, yeah, it's been like a progression. We've been, he's been working on it for a while. Um, and then just, I'd say like a couple months ago, we sat down and did a revision together um, you know, like I said, just, um, logistically, as far as like scheduling it out and, and what would be pragmatic and what would be best for the film. So, um, I mean, when I did the initial read of it, I was, uh, shocked, but like in a good way, right. um, not just that it's ambitious, but, um, it's pretty audacious, you know, it, it is an exploitation film and, and he, you know, trying to write something like in the vein of John Waters or something just like incredulous where like everything is like over the top, you know, it not even just like the gore per se, but you know, there's a lot of ickiness and, you know, I wouldn't say ridiculous because there is like an element of humor to it um, with some of the gross stuff and, Mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. Sounds up my alley. (laughs) But yeah, not, <laughs> I'm not sure how vague I'm being, but I don't want to give too much away. Of course, of course. Well, you got to cover both the, the shit fuck part and the vile part. <laughs> yeah, we do. Right. We cover it. Right. No pun intended. <laughs> right. And maybe you get covered, too. We'll find out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you said you always wanted to be a part of it. Did, did he write the role for you? Do you know? He did write the role for me. Oh, excellent. Well, so I'm told. Oh, okay. Right. I made a joke the it's other day. It's always good to add like, that in later. I yeah, I totally wrote this for you. But yeah. yeah, no, I think I I made a, a little gag the other day that like, yeah, I think you wrote the role for me because you knew that you could get me to do some of this crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, the um a lot of the roles, a lot of the characters were written with specific actresses and actors in mind of just, you know, some people are just you know, perfect for the casting and born to play certain roles. And so apparently I'm Aloe and I am the punk boy, (laughs) the role I was born to play. Right. Well, you said, uh, so when you're reading it, like uh, you said, like uh, he knew that you would be up to do some of these things. So is there any preparation to go into the movie just for you as an actor? I should be getting this question a lot. Um, I haven't even, I, I mean, I've been so focused on all the, the pre-production and everything like that, that I, I mean, I've always been like a kind of fly and wing it kind of actress anyway. Um, you know, when I have like a bigger emotional investment in something, I'll obviously do my homework. I mean, you know, not to, uh, just out myself but I mean a lot of the times I just like literally just show up and do it um for this one specifically like I said I have a ton of emotional investment so um however uh most of my focus right now has been on the pre-production aspect so you know I'll do a little 
a little cramming <laughs> the, the night yeah. before. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I keep getting asked that question, and um, I don't know. I well, how about on the, the physical yeah, side of the movie? Because, really. you know, I read that it's all practical effects and it's a gang movie post-apocalyptic. So I assume it's like a, a physical a physical role for you. Um, Maybe it's not. I have no idea. Uh, I might not know what the hell I'm talking about. I mean, I don't know. I guess to 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 some extent. Um, yeah, I mean, there is like the the rival girl gang element to it. And I mean, it's certainly a demanding role. Um, and then, you know, we have a bunch of like pro wrestlers that are, um, like local wrestlers that are going to be doing a lot of like the choreography. We have a whole like subplot pertaining to that. So, you know, we'll leave most of that stuff up to, to the professionals and the people sure. that can like really pull that off. Yeah. Are um, you a wrestling fan? Not particularly. <laughs> I'm a wrestling fan. <laughs> That's a lot, like everybody's gonna renege on their money now. Like ah, <laughs> all the wrestling fans are like what? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, but my boyfriend certainly is. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All my guy friends are. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Eventually, they'll win you over. You'll become a big. We'll say. <laughs> so I mentioned Linnea Quigley's uh, headdress and the costume, and I saw that's one of the perks uh, on Thrust. Mm-hmm. which is pretty yeah amazing. that's an original costume that was done by our friend batanya grant she's helping with a lot of the costumes she's an amazing designer and stylist and yeah it's it's a one-of-a-kind really intricate really elaborate linnea's character is called mother nature so she's this kind of like nature uh goddess um, and then her uh, minions, her slaves are the dirty dogs. So we have some some pretty elaborate costuming in that scene, um, particularly. And, you know, we know that people just love Linnea so much. And it's a particularly badass costume. And it's a one of a kind. So we thought we would put it as one of the perks on the Indiegogo. Yeah. I don't think we have any takers yet. Really? I can't believe it. I would think that would be one of the main things. Not right. Yeah, maybe. maybe, oh, maybe if we don't sell it, then I'm keeping the it. Yeah. <laughs> I think people would like to see me do the show dressed as Linnea Quigley and, and throw. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. We'll give you a discount oh, okay. <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> but then you're obligated to do every show henceforth in the headdress. <laughs> I'm all about it. I'm all about being a very silly intro, but there's a lot of cool perks besides a headdress. There's a severed head, which is perfect for without your head and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, there is. <laughs> so what kind of thought goes involved into making all the perks? Oh, I don't know. I kind of left that to Victor. I've never done any kind of like crowdfunding anything in the past. I always thought, I mean, when I first learned of it several years ago, I was like that seems dubious at best like i can't even believe that this is real there's got to be some kind of catch to it um but then you know i see like all these indie filmmakers raising pretty substantial budget doing it so i think ultimately it was just like buddies of ours that have been successful at it in the past kind of giving us advice of like what you know and even being like fans of genre films ourselves of like what kind of things we thought you know, people would like what, what people would be happy to have, or, you know, if they want to just donate because they want to help out the film and be philanthropic, or if, you know, if you want a little something for the, for the money, I mean, we have all the, you know, the Blu-rays, um, we have two short films that we did on VHS and those kind of obvious things. And then the, the kind of one-off perks like the prop head and Linnea's costume and, um, I don't know, different thing. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the posters. Yeah, yeah we got some like yeah, we got the poster. a theatrical poster as well as we um, printed up like two teaser posters um, that are available on the Indiegogo. So all sorts of like cool memorabilia that, you know, you got to get it while the getting's good. And uh, the artwork on the posters are great. Cool. Yeah, who, uh, <laughs> Thanks. It's not a question. It's just a comment. <laughs> uh, who, who, uh, who designed those? Who did design those, babe? I don't remember the name. Uh, the photographer is Brooklyn. Ewing. 
Brooklyn Ewing, who's a fantastic photographer. Um, I did a photo shoot with her here in Dayton. And then my co-star, Allison Egan, did hers up in, where does she live? Toledo. Holy Toledo. Holy Toledo. I can't believe I didn't remember that. Um, so yeah, so that um, photographer in particular, I know Victor was like, we absolutely have to get her. She's amazing. And she, you know, she gets it. And she did. She captured the whole look. All of her pictures were beautiful. And then, um, I mean, we went through a couple of prototypes with the poster and stuff when we were initially just kind of like rushing to get the campaign up. Um, got a little feedback that like they didn't look professional enough, which we agreed with. Again, that was just like a test run. And then um, Victor, I believe just, how did you? I just found someone on the He found someone on the interwebs <laughs> to, to do the graphics and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we love them. We thought they, we think they turned out great. Is that a pink gun that you have in the, uh, in the poster? Yeah, it's a, it's a prop gun that we spray painted pink. Nice. And it's not actually spray outfit. paint. We did some, because um, it's a buddy of ours, loaned it to us. And I was just like, can we paint it pink? And he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, so uh, we concocted some little thing. It was a trick Victor knows about where you use like hairspray and oh, I see. You know, what else, yeah. food coloring or something. And, and then it washes off. And oddly enough, that's the same outfit I'm wearing under the, the desk here. <laughs> oh, everybody's just cramping my style figures. <laughs> is, I, I approve, though. I, I, like the, I like the whole outfit. Cool. Thank you. And the, and the, uh, the backdrop there, the area. So you said like uh, sets, but I assume you find a lot of uh, interesting locations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's one location um, here in Dayton that we found that um, – I mean, I don't want to advertise it because we're convinced that as soon as other people know well, about it, everybody's yeah. going to be shooting so. there because it's like that incredible. But it's just like the perfect juxtaposition of like the crumbling infrastructure and like wilderness overtaking everything where everything's like overgrown, but everything's covered in graffiti and the buildings are all dilapidated. And um, like a majority of our exterior scenes will be shot at that location. So we were really happy when we found that or like this is perfect this is thrust it just like completely embodied everything you know that victor had envisioned and that you know we decided like this is the look for the film and it was just pretty exciting when we found that place how do you go about finding locations or some of these did, um do you make notes of him before you make a movie like hey you know if i ever make something this is a cool place or do you actually just go around wandering around i mean some of it's accidental. I mean, we've been doing like a ton of location scouting for this film for, for months. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you find a location and it's just perfect. It's like exactly what you had in your head. Um, other times it's like, well, this could work. We could dress it like this or just shoot it this way. Um, and then sometimes those things accidentally turn out even better. Um, but, but yeah, it, Actually, a, a buddy of ours that's another Dayton filmmaker um, had had found it and shot just some like quick scenes there. And I had a little cameo role in his film. So when we went to shoot my scenes, that's when we were like, this is perfect for our film. Yeah. And he's a buddy of ours. So he didn't mind so much sharing the the concept of okay. of that location. Yeah. Is there a big like underground um, film community in Dayton? I mean, I, I, I'm not from here. The Victor, Victor isn't from here either. He just kind of relocated here. Um, I mean, I think there's a little scene going on. Um, and I feel like pretty much wherever you go, there's kind of I that. I mean, that even, you know, show. when I was living in New Jersey and I would tell people that I was an actress, they'd be like, oh yeah, there's a big, uh, film industry scene in New Jersey. I'm like, kind of, you'd be surprised. Um, you know, and things with a little bit more of a budget, they'll just fly you out to whatever location. And yeah, I mean, there's like little things sprouting up everywhere. I feel like any corner of the country that you go to there, you know, there's some yeah. little independent I, scene going on. I agree. I always bring that up on the show because people think, you know, if, if I don't live in LA or maybe New York, I can't be involved in movies, but there's uh, wherever you're from within some type of distance, I'm sure there's some kind of a film community and, you know, yeah. you can get involved on in a small, you know, small scale. and Yeah, know, for sure. Yeah, same thing with uh, theaters. Like, I'm lucky to have a few older theaters that show old movies and stuff like that. And 
uh, wherever you're from, there's probably yeah. Depend. Yeah, yeah. They're within reason. I, mean, you I know. say near meets in Boston. Like a distance like that's ahead. reasonable. There's yeah. usually something cool. There's a little gems here and there. So uh, you said you've been working on thrust for a couple of years, like you've been wanting to make it. Did the pandemic affect that at all? Like did yeah. you get things off for a year or so? Yeah. <laughs> it did. Um, I think originally we we wanted to do it last summer, and then obviously that was completely impossible. And then we just ended up doing uh, the short triangle. Um, but <laughs> in some sense, I feel like, part of it is almost working to our advantage because people are so excited to be a part of it. And I feel like it's like a lot of the monotony of like, yeah, people feeling pretty stifled and not getting to do like a lot of fun things or creative things for a while now with everything shut down and like pause. People are just, um, you know, we, we hope that people are excited to work on the project regardless, but I really like sense like a, more of a motivation from people where they're like, yeah, they're just really excited to do something creative and, and travel and work with like a cool group of people and like-minded people. So in that sense, it's helped us, but, um, but yeah, we, we were hoping to do it sooner, but you know, things happen for a reason and doing it now. Uh, Where can people see triangle by the way? Uh, Can you see it anywhere? Well, uh, we do have on the Indiegogo on VHS, we have uh, Triangle, which is Victor's uh, short film that we did last summer. And then another one that um, our friend Cody directed. When did we do that? A couple of months ago. So there, there are two short films from Transient Pictures that are on a VHS. Um, and it is on the Symbolicus DVD, which is also available on the Indiegogo, which is just a compilation of, of several short films. And uh, the concept being like um, that every filmmaker is assigned a symbol and it's completely open to interpretation and you just shoot a short based on that. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun then. Uh, how many people yeah. were involved in that? Sorry? How many people were involved in that? Do you know? How in, many in Triangle? Or, or how many people are on Symbolicus? Symbolicus. Um, well, I think he's actually putting out a few subsequent ones because oh, okay. he had so many submissions. I, I believe on on the one we're on. So there's thirteen on on ours, and um, from what I understand, he's he's releasing at least one more because there were a bunch of submissions of of things. So yeah. That's yeah. cool. uh, yeah. What interested you uh, to pursue acting to begin with or, or filmmaking? Um, with the acting thing, I was, when I was like 17, 18 years old, just the town that I was grew- growing up in had um, a little tiny exploitation company called Factory 2000. Um, and the, I mean, it was just people that I knew from from my town and, you know, I was pretty starry eyed and excited about the entire thing. I, like, so I kind of just inadvertently got scooped up by that. Um, that particular company was uh, being distributed by um, EI Cinema. That was also Alternative Cinema. And I ultimately started working for that company. Um, I was contracted actress for them for several years did. I mean, I don't even know how many movies with those guys. Um, so it, it was like a kind of accidental thing that I kind of just got into it. And then I, I did enjoy it. I thought like, this is certainly cooler than anything else that anybody would pay me to do. Like it sure. beats weight and tables. But then once I was, you know, working on films and stuff and I got pretty obsessed with the process and everything. Then I went to film school just so I could, I mean, I initially thought it would help me with my acting and just, you know, just having a broader understanding of the whole filmmaking process. Um, I guess that remains to be seen if it helped me in that way. But, um, but yeah, just working on movies in general, it's, you know, feels good to have a more broad understanding of, of how to do it. Yeah, I so then I can be uh, extra bossy on set, and I'm like, "You're just an actress, <laughs> Put down woman." That's the yeah, that's the real reason. I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you like to direct yourself again? 
or not your not direct yourself, but direct, <laughs> direct myself. Uh, I would. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I don't know. It seems like a loaded question. I mean, it it's just um, so much work, <laughs> mm-hmm. which goes without saying. Um, and it's not the work that I mind per se, maybe just like not as great at handling stress. And you kind of always forget that aspect of it until you're like right at that, like last stages of pre-production. Like even just for example, like in the past four or five days, um, you know, we, we lost a major location. We had to scramble to, to kind of like, you know, reorganize the schedule. Um, You know, we found out that we may have lost another actor just because, you know, people have other stuff going on in their lives. And um, I mean, I get like pretty easily overwhelmed with that kind of stuff. And also because, you know, I mean, I have like always such a specific vision of like what it needs to be. And then I get kind of thrown for a loop when I think like, oh, I guess we need to like rework it and rethink it now. And like I said before, a lot of the times it's, it's for the best, you know, it works out even better. It's like a little Bob Ross happy mistake apparently with with certain things, but, you know, I mean, I don't miss that aspect of it, (laughs) you know? Yeah. I totally understand. Uh, um, What does Hannah Neurotica think of uh, making a film off her story? If you know, I I think she's excited about it. I guess I don't, I don't really know her. I mean, I uh, used to talk to her online like ages ago when I still did social media, but um, you know, she's just a buddy of Victor's and, And I think that all along she, you know, loved the idea of it being adapted into a screenplay. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I often wonder why I'm on social media. Yeah. I ask you, (laughs) why did you leave social media? I don't know, because I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I just, I I don't think I have the patience for it. Uh Um. Yeah, I feel like like maybe one out of 20 posts is something like interesting or poignant or funny. And then the rest is just like selfies and what people ate that day. And I, I have I have like just um, limited focus for those types of things where, yeah, sometimes I'll even like creep on Victor's phone. And I'll be like, oh, like he'll show me a picture like, oh, this is this actress that I cast in this role. And then I go down the little rabbit hole on Instagram. And then like within like four minutes, I'm like, ah, I'm like throwing the phone. I'm like, I don't care. And I, 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 and I have one of those like addictive personalities too. So I could see that being like, right. even though I dislike it, but that how I get like sucked into it. Oh yeah. I, I totally you know, It's just better yeah, if I just leave it alone. I'd just be totally abstinent from <laughs> social right. media. The only thing I do is play words with friends and even that's annoying because I got all sorts of weirdos hitting on me on that, like act, oh, treating right. it like it's a dating site. And I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to play some Scrabble here. <laughs> so, yeah. And and I'm also just a very private person. You know, I'll have like a couple of people that I'm very close with in my life. And then all the extra is just, I don't know, like um, anxiety inducing and intimidating. And the, a lot of that online stuff's kind of mean spirited anyway. Oh, and, yeah, the Internet's very mean spirited. Yeah, so it's like, eh, I don't got time for that. I don't got time for that smack. Yeah, yeah. I, do, would you say that that improved uh, your mental well-being leaving uh, social media? I mean, perhaps. Perhaps it has. Um, I don't know. Who's to say? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm yeah. mentally well, but it may have been an improvement. Weller? Is that or better? <laughs> Weller. Yeah. I like Weller. I mean, Aaron Weller. Yeah. The new directorial debut from Aaron Weller. Exactly. <laughs> There's a few uh, former guests of the show uh, in the movie. Uh, Linnea, we mentioned. Uh, uh, Victor uh, mm-hmm. has been on the show. And uh, Monique, Monique Dupree. Uh, do you know her at all? I haven't met her yet, which is surprising because... Um, I think like back in the day, we, we definitely had like ran in the same circles, um, know a lot of the same people, definitely did a lot of the same conventions. I've never gotten to meet her, but I'm so excited to work with her. I think she's just so incredible, so talented, so beautiful. 
yeah, I mean, we were really, really happy when we got her for, for the role of Summer Eve. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. I had her on the show, it was like 10 or 12 years ago, and I've had her on since then, but it's really cool to see her, uh, especially in the last few years, really do a, a lot more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty fabulous. And like Victor, we're excited she's doing ours. She's connected to to the horror movies and uh, pro wrestling. Yeah, maybe that's she'll right. be another one to win you over. Into the- <laughs> <laughs> My God, she's like a cult. I yeah. will get you yet, Brown. I don't know why this is so important to me. <laughs> well, I do have Macho Man up here. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the Midnight Creeps are doing the music. Yeah, they're they're yep, they're doing um, a live performance. They're they're making an appearance in the film. Um, we're gonna use that performance, and uh, I think we have a couple other songs that we're gonna feature in the film. So definitely excited to have them. Um, we have some other local musicians uh, whose music will be featured in the film. So yeah. That's really cool. Now, did uh, do you or Victor know them like personally? You know, before the movie. I think they're Victor's buddies. Uh, he's been a fan of theirs for for a while, since he was a a young buck. Now, before you got into acting, what kind of movies did you like, or did you even like movies? Maybe you did not. I've always liked movies. Um, definitely, always. I mean, when I was a really young kid. I was terrified of horror movies. I mean, I, I still am when they're good, but I, I like that more now. Um, and then, you know, it's funny, like I certainly, even when I was doing a ton of like B movies, uh, you know, earlier in my career, I never watched them <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, I didn't even have people like be insulted when I like would meet them at a convention and I didn't like know who they were. And it's like, oh, I don't watch B movies. I'm just in them. Um, but now it's like a whole other like comedic genre to me where like I do kind of enjoy watching them. Um, but yeah, I've always liked horror, even like, you know, like dramas and, um, you know, some independent stuff, even like, like some of the old Westerns definitely love sci-fi Um, but then, you know, like, I like all the, the staples of like David Lynch always loved Jodorowsky when I first started getting into like more obscure kind of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Um, do you have a, do you have any favorite movies? And I, I, where do you mention Lynch and uh, Jodorowsky? Because one directed Dune and one was going to direct Dune. Right. (laughs) Maybe that's why I went on that, uh, little tangent there mentally. Um, well, for Jodorowsky, I mean, they're they're all amazing, but um, I definitely love Holy Mountain. Um, what, I mean, my top three for like decades now, Bonnie and Clyde has always been one of my favorites. Um, hmm, what else? I love George Romero's Martin for uh, that, horror I, stuff. I think that's um, one of his more, un- I guess people know it, but it's more, one of his more underrated movies. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I always loved that one. Um, like Alien for a little like, you know, sci-fi horror melding. I'm glad you said Alien. I like Aliens, but I think Alien is the superior movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, terrifying, great yeah. performances. It's everything you need in a film. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I have an Alien thing around here somewhere, but... It, I keep adding stuff so that it gets buried somewhere here. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> I'm not going to go looking for it. So, uh, it's the- a fine line between a uh, collector and hoarder. <laughs> like, when do you cross the line of like uh, running out of places to put all this memorabilia and all the nerdy film stuff? Nerdy. <laughs> Yeah. Nerdy is not a dirty word. Come on now. Especially now. I love nerds. Yeah, when I grew up, <laughs> I became when I grew up in the eighties, it was it wasn't cool to be a nerd, but that, now it's cool. Now it's hip to be square. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah, I, grew I up knew. I always knew. Dragons and was in chess club, and that was not cool. <laughs> but now it's totally cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess it's all relative, you know. <laughs> right. Where were all these people? When the I nerds was think 12? it's cool. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, if I was 12 now, it would be a lot better. But Yeah, uh, grass is always greener. Right. <laughs> I would have been so cool. <laughs> Captain of the chess team. Yeah, I play sports and chess club. Yeah, I'm the sixth grade, I was the sixth grade uh, chess club champion. Just let all the, all the ladies out there uh, aware of that. <laughs> yeah, that's a panty dropper for <laughs> sure. We'll let them all know next time I'm playing uh, Words with Friends. I'll just like, yeah. yeah, see, like nerdiest, nerdiest crap ever. <laughs> exactly. So uh, Thrust, a shit-fucked vile love story. I like to say that name. Uh, on Indiegogo, the only problem with Indiegogo, I can't. It doesn't give me like a good uh, link that I can just say on the on the air. But if you look up "thrust a shit fucked via love story," it's going to bring you right there. All right. Well, perfect. <laughs> I can't say certain things you could say, certain things you can't. You know, leave it all for in the movie where we don't feel like we're being censored. Right. I also noticed if you just put "thrust" in your name, it'll it'll come up. up. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So yeah. everybody, go do that. Exactly. Please. Oh. I do want to ask, too, about uh, Allison Egan, your co-star. Have you worked with her before? I haven't. I haven't even gotten to meet her yet. No. Oh, we're going to be lovers. Could be. Victor might be, uh, he might be, might lose a lover here with the movie. <sighs> we'll see. Or gain we'll a lover. polyamorous. <laughs> no, I'm definitely really excited to work with her, though. Um, we had some kind of switcheroo kind of thing early on in the casting. Um yeah, just uh, certain people that weren't available or whatnot. And um, we were kind of scrambling to see, like, who are we going to get to play my co-star? Because um, we're kind of like the two protagonists of the film. Um, and she was cast in, in a smaller role. And we kind of just agreed, like, if we could get her to play Vera, you know, the counterpart to Allo, um, you know, She's really cool. Uh, you know, Victor knows her and I think she's a great actress. She has the look. And I was like, I mean, if, if she's down for it, then she would be perfect. And she was into it. So again, it's one of those little magical things that just kind of work themselves out sometimes for the better. So, so yeah, I'm very excited to work with her. Very cool. And yeah. uh, so I'm gonna put this up here in a minute, the, the interview and uh, people, even if you could just donate a buck, you know, it helps out. And if you can't donate for a reason, it helps to share it. Even if Aaron doesn't like social media, you can share it on the social media. I'll be oblivious to it, but please, I know the rest of the world's doing it. (laughs) You don't have to take a picture of ham sandwich. You can, uh, you can share uh, the campaign instead. Yeah. Yeah. The, the no social media might be better for my mental wellness, but certainly not conducive to my career, but it's fine. You know, it's a give and take. It keeps you mysterious. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> the mystery of whether i'm still alive or not <laughs> yeah. i noticed you mentioned that uh somewhere that was that ever out there that you weren't alive that you were- <laughs> I've, I've heard some rumors They're like you don't exist if you're not on social media mm-hmm. you're not real yeah that's like, even no, worse than here. if you died you just stopped existing <laughs> still living on earth one which is just not out in cyberspace but yep i'm still here <laughs> Well, that works. I'm currently actually banned from Facebook, but I think. Oh, I'm, you I'm, badass! I'm, 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 <laughs> you rebel. Club and being banned from Facebook. It, <laughs> yeah, it's very exclusive. Yeah. Well, this has been very fun to talk with you. It was fun. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Victor, for sending this up. Thanks, Vic. Yep. He's doing yoga. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, thank you for doing it. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. All right. Very good. Right. Join us next week when Aaron returns. No, I'm just kidding. But we'll have you. But, well, we'll From be the fine. dead. <laughs> right. From non-existence. <laughs> All right. All right. Very cool. Thank you. Peace. Yeah. Bye.